So the structure of this talk is as follows. First, I'll talk about uh, EA methodology and how it can be misapplied. Uh, that's naive effective altruism where you neglect certain important considerations. Um, and then I'll turn to psychology neglect, which is where you neglect specifically considerations pertaining to psychology. And that comes into two kinds or two forms. First, you might neglect your own psychology. You might neglect the fact that you have psychological limits and you can't work all the time, for instance. Uh, and second, you might neglect other people's psychology. You might neglect the strength of their emotions and preferences, and therefore you might criticize, criticize them overly harshly, which might uh, turn them against you. Um, and at the end, I'll then turn, turn to some nuances. I will say that even though one should never neglect psychological considerations, it's also not the case that you should never do anything that feels emotionally tough for yourself or for other people. Sometimes we should, and it's a delicate balance to decide when to. And I should also point out that there's been quite a few talks on naive effective altruism and related topics over the years in effective altruism. So this is to some extent uh, an, an attempt to summarize that work and put it in to one structure. So throughout this talk, I will refer to various other talks uh, and articles on these topics, and they will all appear also on two slides at the very end. So, Let's turn now to effective altruism methodology and naive effective altruism. So effective altruism is of course about doing the most good. And for that, we need to find the most effective actions, the most effective interventions. And to do that, we need to estimate the impact of potential actions. Um, and that means that we need to take all relevant considerations, all considerations that are relevant uh, for the impact of these potential actions, we need to take all those considerations into account. And by considerations, I just mean arguments that might change the estimated impact of this action that you're assessing. So this is something that Nick Bostrom has talked about in a, in a talk that you can find online. It's also transcribed. So let's uh, look at an example. Suppose that you're considering uh, whether to promote economic growth as an intervention. And then you're thinking about what are the considerations for and against? Well, one kind of obvious uh, consideration is that it can have short-term benefits, for instance, short-term health benefits. If we have more money, then we can spend more money on healthcare and that confers health benefits. But then perhaps a bit less obviously, it might mean that more dangerous technology is invented. So if we have more money and technological progress goes faster, then more dangerous AI systems uh, can be developed and that can pose uh, a risk of an existential catastrophe. But also it might mean that we have more money to spend on mitigating uh, such existential, the risks of such existential disasters. So that's yet another, um, perhaps not so obvious uh, consequence of economic growth. So uh, naive effective altruism, and I should also say that that list wasn't exhaustive, obviously, it was just some examples. Obviously there are more uh, considerations that we need to consider uh, when assessing whether to promote economic growth. So naive effective altruism, that's when you neglect certain of these important considerations. And of course the, the considerations that people are more likely to neglect, those are the more subtle, the more indirect, the more long-term effects. You don't neglect very obvious ones, but you, you neglect less obvious considerations. And that might lead to grave mistakes that you're pursuing actions which are ineffective or maybe even harmful. So Lucius Caviola, he has talked about uh, this concept of naive effect vouchers in a talk that you can find online. So with that background, let's turn to the main topic of today's talk, namely neglecting psychology. Um, so some considerations that are important when we're assessing the, um, the impact of various actions, they relate to the psychology of ourselves and other in EA and also people outside of EA. 
Um, so we have psychological limitations, uh, like I already said, like we, we can't work all the time. Um, and we have strong emotions and preferences. Uh, so, and these considerations, they change the estimated impact of our actions. So neglecting them, that's a form of naive effective altruism. It's not identical to uh, naive effective altruism, but it's a kind of uh, naive effective altruism. So let's start with the first kind of psychology neglect, where you neglect your own uh, psychology. So uh, the forms of such neglect that's been most discussed are uh, probably um, neglecting limits to frugality and work. So at first glance, when you, when you discover effective altruism, the notion that we should try to do the most good, um, then you might think, well, that should, that should mean that I should work almost all the time and I should live on almost nothing because that's the way uh, to maximize my positive impact. Um, but that is naive because you have limits. Uh, you, you can't work all the time. And if you live on almost nothing, that will also be very tough. So it, it's not good to be excessively frugal or to overwork because that can lower your impact. It can lead to burnout and then you, you can't work or can work much less. So actually you would have been better off uh, not just personally, but also your impact would have been greater um, if you had worked a bit less and if you would have been a bit less frugal. So this is something that Julia Wise, for instance, has discussed. Um, but like perhaps a bit less obviously, um, there are also sort of community-wide effects uh, which are important to take into account. Uh, so if there is sort of a norm uh, of extreme frugality or, or a norm that we should work all the time in effective altruism, that could, for instance, harm um, recruitment to effective altruism because people might not want to join uh, a community where there's an expectation that they um, should sort of sacrifice so much. And also, it could harm the internal culture of effective altruism. So if people are all the time on the on the border to, to burnout, then you know that's that's not going to lead to sort of a joyful, productive culture within effective altruism. So uh, let's now turn to neglecting other people's psychology, because just like you can neglect your own psychological limits, you can also neglect other people's psychological limits and their emotions and their preferences. So let's look at an example of that. Suppose um, that you're considering whether to criticize some mistake that someone is making. What are the considerations here for and against? Well, the most obvious consideration maybe is that it's important to convey information about um, this mistake. Uh, well, because if they don't learn about the mistake, how could they address it? So that's the the, the consideration that first comes to mind, probably. But then there are others. Well, if you criticize them uh, like a bit disrespectfully and, and harshly, that might reduce their motivation because they might feel bad. And that, thereby, you might um, decrease their future impact. And also, it might harm uh, the relationship between them and you if they now feel uh, resent towards you, if they are resentful towards you, then they might not want to help you in the future and that might uh, decrease your impact. So naively, you might neglect the, the second and the third, or you might at least underrate the strength of those two considerations. And why might one do that? Well, I think one line uh, of thought here that is possible is that some people might think that, well, uh, this uh, second and third uh, consideration, they might apply to people outside of effective altruism, like people in general, but people in effective altruism, they're so sort of so set on the goal of, of doing the most good, so they won't think so much about, you know, being harshly criticized. They will put that aside in, in the sort of quest for the greater good. And I don't think that's quite how it works, but I think even people within EA feel they, they, they feel hurt if they're being 
criticized in a sort of overly harsh way. So it's, and it's important not to forget that. So some more examples of uh, neglect of other people's uh, uh, psychology. Um, so naively, you might interfere excessively with other people's projects. So you might, you might think that like, some project isn't being run in the right way, and then you might try to address that. You might run in and tell them what, what to do. And you, uh, often people don't quite like that because they would be sort of somewhat territorial and think, well, this is my project. No one else should come here and tell me what to do. And then um, you might think that, well, they, they shouldn't think like that, like because uh, if I am right, and I have a good point, um, they should just accept that and, and change their ways. It doesn't matter that it's their project. The goal is to do the most good and they should just put that aside. But I don't think that's quite how it works. Like people are somewhat territorial, you know, maybe they shouldn't, but they are. And we need to take that into account uh, when we're considering when will it interfere with other people's projects. Um, so another example might be sort of general abrasiveness. Of course, like it's human nature to sometimes uh, be a bit abrasive. Um, and like, why might people be that? Uh, like, well, in, in effective altruism. Well, I think one thought here that might sort of unconsciously or subconsciously occur is that well, in effective altruism, we're trying to do sort of uh, big picture altruists. We're trying to reduce existential risk. We're trying to reduce global poverty. So that's what's important to be sort of an altruist regarding the bigger questions. So it's not so important to be um, altruistic regarding the, the small issues, like in day-to-day -day encounters with, with other people. And like one might think of other, other people in effect altruists, they should sort of realize that and like put it aside if someone is not being particularly nice to them in a, in a sort of daily encounter. Uh, but I don't think that's how it works. Again, it's sort of, this is sort of variations of the same theme, I guess. So people do care a lot about everyday niceness. And if, if you're not nice to them, then you know, they, they won't like it, even if you are doing a lot of good uh, regarding these sort of more big picture issues. Um, and lastly, uh, there's also norm breaking for the great the good, the topics that have been much discussed both within effective altruism and also within academic philosophy. So for instance, lying. So like, naively, you might think that in order to maximize donations to effective charities, you should exaggerate their effectiveness. And this is not a good idea for, for several reasons, but like one here, which I'm gonna focus on, is that this kind of norm breaking is very strongly frowned upon. Um, so if people find out about this, they're gonna punish you severely. And naively, you might think that, well, um, if I get found out, people will realize that I did it for a good cause, so they won't judge me so harshly. Uh, but I think that's not the case. Like to the contrary, people will judge you harshly, um, which means that well, it's one reason then uh, among several that it's not a good idea to to do so. Um, so, uh, and also re regarding this category, there are sort of community-wide effects to to take into account uh, because our actions they are norm-setting. So if you're uh, considering whether to criticize someone harshly, then you shouldn't just think what are the costs and benefits of doing that in this particular situation. You should also think about like, well, do we want people to criticize others like this in situations like this in general? And that is because like people will look at your behavior when they're considering how to behave themselves. So, so your actions will have that kind of sort of indirect effect on other people's behavior. And that's something that you need to take into account. And another community-wide effect that, that's important 
is that when you're part of a community like the effective altruist community, then any reputational effects of your actions, they won't just concern yourself, but also the community as a whole. So if you're breaking norms against lying, that will obviously harm your reputation, but it can also harm the reputation of the whole effective altruist community. So, and that uh, as um, myself and Ben Garfinkel and Owen Coppel Barrett, we argued in an article, that can be an additional reason not to break norms because it harms the whole effective altruist community. Um, so let's now move on to some nuances. Um, so like I said, we should of course do some things that may conflict with our own or other people's emotions. Um, we should sometimes criticize people, you know, even in ways that it can feel tough for them. And um, we should sometimes interfere with other people's projects if like serious mistakes are being made. Um, so our psychological setup is just one consideration. It's not the only consideration. They, they, that must be weighed against other considerations. Um, and exactly what to do in a particular situation, that's often a, a quite tricky question. And I think we, we need to have a continuous discussion about these issues within effective altruism. And we are, like some, some issues about like norms, um, they are discussed on the EA forum, like people discuss particular events uh, and so on. And, um, and by and large, I think that is going well. And, and that's exactly how it should be. Like you, you should discuss what norms you want to have in a community and what culture we want to have. Um, so here are some issues you might want to discuss, like how should we weigh the benefits uh, and the costs of criticisms against each other, like the, the informational benefits versus the po potential emotional costs. And another related issue is, can we get the benefits of criticism without the cost or with a, with a sort of minimum, uh, minimal cost? Um, uh, so for instance, we, we might uh, come up with a setup where people feel like even though they're being criticized, they're being sort of respectfully treated and that might sort of reduce the emotional costs of criticisms. So these are important prioritization questions. So uh, Jess Whittlestone and, and Michelle Hutchinson, they wrote one article on this that you can have a look at. Um, so to sum up, uh, uh, in effective altruism, there is a risk that we neglect psychology, neglect psychological considerations when we're estimating the impact of our actions. Um, so we might neglect our own limits, we might neglect other people's emotions and preferences, uh, and we should be alert to that, and we should continuously consider how to balance psychological considerations against other considerations when we're deciding what to do. So that's it. Let's just run through the reference list here. So um, we had three talks here that I referred to. First one was by Nick Bostrom, and then there's one from Lucius Cariola and one from myself. Uh, so you can, of course, stop the video if you, uh, if you don't <clears throat> have time to, to, to read this right now. Um, and then there are three articles here. There is one by myself, Ben Garfinkel, and Owen Cotton Barrett. Uh, and then there was this one by Jess Whittleston and Michelle, Michelle Hutchinson. And then lastly, one by Julia Wise. Okay, thank you very much. Great, thank you for that talk, Stefan. Uh, I see we've had a number of questions submitted, so let's kick off um, with the first one. Um, among the potential pitfalls of neglecting psychology that you mentioned, And if so, how should EA do so? Uh, yeah, okay, thank you, Sim. That, that's a very good question from, from one of the members of the audience. Like, um, well, one thing I, I do want to say is that I think there's all there, there's been a lot of thought going into this already over the years, and, and people are sort of thinking very carefully about the, these issues in the effective altruist community, both sort of 
centrally from like people at the Center for Effective Altruism, like, like Julia Weiss and, and others. Uh, and also sort of, you know, uh, members, other members of the effective altruist community were not sort of working specifically on those issues. So um, I'm like, I'm sure more could be done. And I, I should also say that like, well, I'm an academic sort of thinking about these issues in the abstract and like, you know, I, I see some patterns in the effective altruist community. Uh, I actually did used to work for Center for Effective Altruism, and then maybe I saw like a little bit like more direct things that happened, but but now I don't anymore. So like, I'm sure like other people like like Julia or another such CA, they would be better placed to sort of assess, you know, what exactly it could be made better. But uh, by and large, I think we're doing relatively well. And um, like relatedly, I guess I want to say also that. EAs have a tendency to be sort of very analytical um, and sort of, which is great, but that also means that they're also like thinking um, quite critically, like what could be improved, which is, which is also great, but it's also important to sort of realize that some things we're actually doing pretty well. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that definitely resonates with me. The um sometimes being overly critical and not stopping and, and recognizing all the great work that people are doing. Um, we only have time for one more question because we're, we're running a bit short on time. Um, so there is an endless potential for important considerations. How do we decide which considerations are important and which ones are not? An easy question for you. No, but it's a very good question. Mm -hmm. And I think like um, the key takeaway here is that there are no easy solutions. There, you know, you can't come up with a sort of straightforward quantitative framework or something like that for this. So inevitably you will need to, to use your judgment. Uh, so that's one takeaway. And the other thing is like, I think it's very important then to sort of discuss particular cases like which we are doing in effective altruism. Like people are discussing back and forth, like, you know, both online and in person, like was that the reasonable reaction and like, you know, how, how should we think about these issues? So, so I, I think that's the way to go. Okay, wonderful. And that takes us perfectly to time. Uh, thank you very much for your time, Stefan, and for your talk. Thank you.